Just months now to go for the U.S. presidential race to officially take place. Ahead of that, the four-day Democratic convention has started in Chicago already. And this is about a month after. Remember, President Biden ended his re-election campaign as a growing number of Democrats started to question his ability, given his age and other issues, to handle the duties of commander-in-chief of, of the biggest global power of the world. President Joe Biden, however, will be addressing in just a short while the Democrat convention, which means whether former U.S. president, uh, uh, also other U.S. president like Barack Obama, will likely give a speech. Now, amid all of this, Trump's opponent in 2016 was Hillary Clinton. She'll also give a speech. So there's a full itinerary and a list of those, the high profile from the convention, uh, who will be speaking is what we are told. Addressing a rally, Kamala Harris accepted that Democrats were the underdogs in the race. She even criticized her rival Donald Trump, implying Trump was a coward during the Pennsylvania campaign appearance. While Donald Trump continues to be all guns blazing now against Kamala Harris because Joe Biden has stepped down in that historical move, but he's added about Kamala Harris and using some sharp retort like she's the most radical left person who could run for office. Joe, thank you for your historic leadership, for your lifetime of service to our nation, and for all you will continue to do. We are forever grateful to you. People from every corner of our country and every walk of life are here, united by our shared vision for the future of our country. And this November, we will come together and declare with one voice, as one people, we we are moving forward. Let us fight for the ideals we hold dear and let us always remember when we fight, we win. This campaign is about a recognition that frankly over the last several years there's been this kind of perversion that has taken place, I think, which is to suggest, which is to suggest that the measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down when what we know is the real and true measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. Yeah. That's what we see as strength. We know what strength looks like. That's what strength looks like. Anybody who's about beating down other people is a coward. I very much consider us the underdog. We have a lot of work to do to earn the vote of the American people. That's why we're on this bus tour today, and we're going to be traveling this country as we've been, and talking with folks, listening to folks, and hopefully earning their votes over the next 79 days. I feel like we need to earn everyone's vote, and that means being on the road, being in communities where people are, where they live. Who would believe this? 80 days from now, we are going to defeat a communist known as Kamala Harris. She's a communist most radical left person ever to run for office. This is not what this country needs. We've had enough of them. We're going to win back the White House and we're going to take back our country. But she breaks everything that she touches, but soon we're going to fix every single problem. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Crooked Joe have created. What happened to Biden? I was running against Biden. All of a sudden, I'm running against somebody else. It's true. You know, it's interesting. I said, who am I running against? Harris. I said, who the hell is Harris? You don't know. <laughs> who the hell is Harris? Let me bring in now from Washington, D.C., journalist Rohit Sharma is joining me. Rohit, you've been tracking all the latest that's been happening in the cases till now. How significant is the day one of Democrat convention? What are we expecting? And uh, when will Biden speak and when will Kamala Harris speak? Well, uh, looks. Thanks for having me, Pooja. Uh, we'll have uh, we'll have we had a lot of speakers already from this morning. We, okay. we had Hillary Clinton. Uh, she was the nom Democratic nominee in 2016. She spoke and she gave a very firing speech. We had AOC, another firebrand leader for the Democrats. She spoke. Uh, we'll have uh, Dr. Jill Biden, FOTUS. Uh, she will be okay. speaking and she'll be introducing her husband, President Joe Biden, mm. uh, who actually, you know, a lot of people say this is his last big speech before he retires Possibly, to yes. from, from public life. Uh, and President, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris is slated to speak on Thursday. And in between, we'll, 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 hear, we'll hear from President Obama, who's slated to speak tomorrow. We'll also hear from Michelle Obama. Some people had, had said that she could be the nominee eventually. So uh, we'll, we'll hear from a lot of Democrats. And, you know, I think the theme today is about uh, Kamala Harris for the people. Now, remember, these words were the first words she said 
when she assumed the office of uh, attorney general in California. This was the same theme that she ran on in 2020. So in a way, life's coming full circle for, for Kamala. I mean, you know, she ran in 2020. She could not get the nomination. But today, you know, when she was on the stage, uh, she, th she thanked Joe Biden. Uh, it was a surprise with it. She was not slated to be there, but she wanted to fire up the crowd and make sure that she does it publicly before uh, today, before Joe Biden can speak. Um, I think another theme for the Democrats is trying to, you know, some sort of things that were said today were obviously about how close they came to defending Trump in 2016. Remember, the comparison with 2016 is because Trump was running against a female at that point in time. So I think a lot of talk about uh, that reminding voters to go out and vote. We saw Hillary Clinton say that there are cracks in the glass ceiling, but you know we've got to do this again. And I think everybody understands that this could be done. But there, I mean, there are 70 odd days left, and I think they don't want to leave any stone unturned. And hence, all the big dogs are pulling up mm. for Kamala Harris. So less than three months now to go. Rohit, also tell us, can we say in many ways this would be the sort of big first official uh, public appearance where Joe Biden would hand it over to Kamala Harris? It was, it was historic, unprecedented that a sitting uh, president and hopeful of a rerun almost there says, all right, I'm going to take a step back, or maybe he was forced to, and give it to Kamala Harris. And again, is America ready for a woman and for a woman of color to be becoming the president? Because they'll have to change the strategy here compared to how Trump has been all guns blazing. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I don't think Joe Biden would have envisioned coming, uh, you know, this early at the DNC a month ago. Hmm. Uh, he definitely would have been, you know, somebody who would have waited until Thursday to accept the nomination again. But circumstances changed. I mean, you know, again, from close sources to President Biden, mm -hmm. he kind of was forced out uh, and sort of made this decision. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Again, it, it, it remains to be seen what kind of you know role he plays going forward. But I think as far as, uh, you know, the chances of Kamala Harris goes, I mean, she's definitely, you know, in a dead heat with Donald Trump. You know, nobody thought uh, during the RNC, which was a month ago, that, uh, you know, it, it could be close. Everybody thought it was it was given. President Trump is going to win. Uh, but things have changed since then. I think Kamala coming into the picture has energized the base. Uh, a lot of people are supporting her. Uh, she's trying to build on the same coalition that Barack Obama did in 2008. Uh, she's going after young voters. She's going after African-American voters, the suburban voters. But again, I think, you know, uh, this is this is usually the case, you know, during a convention a candidate comes out with, with what we call as the polling bump. We'll probably see that. But then there are two important events that will follow. One would be, could be, the possible sentencing of President Trump uh, for the New York Hush trial. And the other one would be uh, the debate with uh, President Trump. And that's something I think everybody is waiting for. I think a lot of undecided voters that will finally decide who gets to the White House are waiting for that debate to see how she performs against Donald Trump. And remember, this is the Donald Trump, you know, who doesn't, he's unhinged. He doesn't feel that, you know, he's, he's insulting people. He goes after his opponents in a very ruthless fashion and way. True. Uh, so I think there has to be some strategy behind how Kamala debates Donald Trump. And a lot of, I believe, a lot of independent voters would then decide who they want to support on November 5th. Rohit, keep tracking all the latest, especially when the leaders, Hillary Clinton has started to speak, but others soon will follow, including Barack Obama. And we'll be tracking all the latest. How will they prop up now for Kamala Harris to become possibly the president of the USA? Thank you, Rohit, uh, for the latest on this. Amid all of this, remember, while this is what the political updates have been, but there was one astrologer in the USA who uh, appeared to have predicted that this is going to happen, which is Kamala Harris may come in and Joe Biden may have to step back. And many thought it was unthinkable, but it did happen. And therefore, she's garnered a lot of attention. Astrologer Amy Tripp, speaking to India Today Global, has predicted that Donald Trump will likely win. Speaking to India Today's Geeta Mohan, here's what she's saying. You are also predicting that uh, Donald Trump could become the next U.S. president, but the polls show otherwise. What's your reading now, the latest reading? Is it changing? No, I'm not going to change. Um, I predicted in 2022 that Donald Trump would be president before he even entered the race because I looked at his birth chart and his transit, so the energy he's having on election night is extremely, extremely lucky. Um, so even before he was in the race, I predicted he would win. So I've gotten this far. So I'm going to keep my prediction. Um, the polls can change. And I look, I've looked at Kamala's chart more in depth now that she's the nominee. 
and she does have really excellent transits happening to her chart as well much better than joe biden's in fact i tweeted that if i were in the democratic party before this happened i would put her to the to the front because her transits are much better however i think trump edges her out when it comes down to it